Well, this is just a very special thought that I want to present to you. And I, I, I kind of believe this is one of those messages that would be to whom it may concern because it's a general word. And it's sort of a warning to some extent of how individual believers need to get over it. And what do I mean by get over it? For many, many years in my travels, I have taught several things. Jesus said that if a man has his hand on a plow, and that's a man or woman, let's just say it's both groups, whoever, whomever. If they have their hand to the plow and they're plowing the field and they look back, then they're not fit to enter the kingdom. And you cannot plow a field and create a straight row if you're always looking over your shoulder behind you. It's absolutely impossible. And there were other verses about Lot's wife. Lot's wife was headed out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible tells us that the angel said, don't look back, just get out as fast as you can. And she stopped and paused. She looked back. And of course, you know the story that became her demise because I'm sure that she was wondering what was happening to those sons-in-laws and her daughters that remained in the city while the brimstone and the fire, of course, was burning the city. So the New Testament tells us, remember Lot's wife. What are we to remember about her? We're about, we are to remember of not looking back. You know, the apostle Peter talked about how that if a person has known the Lord and they turn back, uh, this is pretty blunt to say this even in scripture, it's like a, a dog going back to its own vomit or a pig wallowing back into the mire and the mud that it came out of. So many times we don't look back at our own situations as far as our own sin, our own disobedience, our acts of unrighteousness that may have occurred uh, many years ago or in a previous life before we knew the Lord. But we're always pointing back to other people's situations. And I want you to know something that I did a message a while back on the accuser of the brethren in Revelation 12. And an accusation is something that people try to bring up from someone else's past, but they only do it to hurt another person. When you care about and you love someone, love covers a multitude of transgressions. Love covers a multitude of offense. And if you really love them, you don't bring up because you love them too much to talk negative about them because that's not love. And there are people who really need to get over what they have dealt with, what they have gone through, and they need to get over the past and literally move on. I do not understand why some individuals, no matter how long it's been, one year, two year, three year, five, it doesn't matter. They can't not get over the past. And part of that sometimes is a guilt of their own failure that no one knows about. Sometimes it's uh, sitting back and not saying what they have been through or what they did. And uh, there's a lot of condemnation and guilt on them. Sometimes people, for example, there are men that have secret drug problems. They secretly smoke meth and their wife and family doesn't know it. Uh, there's people that have secret pornography problems. There's people that have, uh, you know, all sorts of different situations that no one knows it. So they struggle. And so instead of them seeking help and saying, I need help or I want help, they go off on other people because they are miserable themselves in their own life and their own situation. And so I want to give you this word. Paul was a murderer. Paul uh, consented to the death of Stephen. He had papers to go to Damascus to arrest Christians. He even said he called Christians, caused Christians to blaspheme, put them in prison, had people killed. Now, how low is that? How bad does that get? And yet when he becomes a Christian, people try to talk bad about him. And he said, I've wronged no man. He said, forgetting, here it is, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching for the things that are before. I press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, here's the fact. None of us can go back and undo any stupid, dumb thing we ever did. Number two, 
None of us can go and undo any sin that we ever participated in. Anything that happened in the past, whether it was a sin, iniquity, a dumb decision, hanging around the wrong people, make your list because you'll find out there's something in the past that you said, I wish I did not do. You cannot go back and undo what was done. So quit living in the past. Quit talking about the past. Quit bringing up the past. Quit running around telling everybody about the past. Forget the things that are behind. Now, what do you do? You reach for the things that are before. You cannot go into the future by holding on to the past. You cannot have a blessing from God released to you in fullness, always bringing up other people's junk. God, that's not, God is not in that. That's your flesh. Whence cometh wars and fighting among you, the Bible said, from the lust of your own heart. People fight other people because of ego and pride and lust. You call it whatever you want to. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the bottom line. And the Lord won't bless that. One of the things that the Lord helped me with, and I'll share this in kind of wrapping this up, is that we were baptizing hundreds of young people in Alabama, and it was, it was Karen Wheaton's ministry. It wasn't my ministry, but I was there with them. They asked me to baptize, and we got to the end of it, and I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, I want you to do your first works over, and that's in the book of Revelation, by the way, and get rebaptized. and I want you to ask me to take out of your heart Every person that's hurt you, harmed you, said lies about you, misled uh, information or whatever it might be that you've held, I want you to release it in the water. And I got very excited. I said, oh, well, I've never thought about that, that that could happen. And so I grabbed my daughter. She was standing there, my little Amanda. And I got, I started wailing. I started crying and wailing as though, as though God was taking some, a death out of me. It was like a death, something dying in me and coming out. And I, when I went down in the water and came back up, I'm telling you, I got a complete 100% total release. Nothing stings anymore. Nothing hurts anymore. You can say what you want. I could give a rip because you're going to stand before God at the judgment. So, hey, I'm letting God handle it all. And since that time, we have witnessed things I can't even tell you about uh, because they're private, the most extraordinary blessings that are ridiculous. It's crazy. And God said to Job in Job 42, when he prayed for his friends, and these were four friends that had said things about him. You know, you, you got hidden sin. God is judging you. God hates you because you're not taking care of the poor, all this stuff. When he prayed for his friends, God turned his captivity, gave him twice as much in the end as he had in the beginning. So you are going to limit God's blessings if you just don't get over everything that's happened to you, the people that have wronged you, the people that have spoken evil about you, the people that misrepresented you, even the people maybe they feel like you did harm to them and they're still bitter and you have asked God for help and repentance and all that. Some of you know what I'm talking about right now. Let it go and let God have his way in your life. Being bogged down with unforgiveness and bitterness and all the other mess is not worth it. You're the one that suffers, not the other person. So it's time to get over it. If you want the favor and the blessing of God in your family, life, and children, then you got to let it go and forget it and move on with your life. Paul said, press toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Pressing involves activity and action. And so there's a lot going to happen in the very near future. And you've got to have that strong relationship with the Father and through the Holy Spirit. I want to thank all of you that are partners of our ministry. If you've never heard of partnership, you can contact our ministry. It's very interesting, some things that we have for our partners. And we hope to see some of you in one of our conferences. And we don't know where all of this is going with the viruses and things, but you know, the Lord knows. And we're just going to kind of, as the old expression says, go with the flow. And we just hope that we'll be able to minister to many of you and you'll get to come and see us sometime either in town here at uh, uh, the, the building and the facility when we have a conference. And don't forget every Tuesday night, we have a service right here at Omega Center International, which is now uh, hosted by Ramp, Ramp Cleveland. And uh, we'd love to have you join us. So come and be a part. You are very welcome to be a part every Tuesday night and our world prayer every Thursday night, beginning at six o'clock live on the internet. And we pray for people each Thursday live right here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Thank you. And I uh, appreciate the time you've taken to join me. Please give me your undivided attention. 
Many months ago, I began to hear secular economists announce a new global reset was coming. That's when I heard this phrase in my spirit, the American apocalyptic reset. For several weeks, I woke up early and began receiving a series of stunning prophetic downloads that I penned and now have placed them all in my brand new prophetic book, America's Apocalyptic Reset. This book is a must read for all Christians, for all of those who love Bible prophecy, for conservative Americans and American patriots. The 19 chapters go extremely deep into exposing the agenda now being secretly plotted and to be publicly forced upon us, the American people, and how we can counter it. I discovered some very stunning ancient prophetic parallels and patterns, some that go back 4,000 years that are repeating themselves in the United States right now. I deal with America's great Babel reset and the planned persecution of Christians, America's self-curse that will eventually bring judgment upon the nation, the coming Jezebel clash, the woman who will be president, how should we act and wisely resist corrupt governments. I reveal the unique Silicon Valley parallels and also go into the plans to bankrupt, then reset America economically. Also, I talk about how to function when the church must go underground. I received a very unique revelation concerning President Trump and a pattern that's found in history. There's a chapter also that I deal with how did the prophets get it wrong and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the most significant prophetic book in the history of my ministry, especially in the time that we're in, but that's not all. I'm also including my most recent inside information prophetic briefing on two audio CDs. It's two hours in length, and I will release detailed information that I cannot, and I want you to hear me, I cannot, nor will I, share this on social media or on television, as absolutely in the climate that we're now in, a lot of this information would be targeted for being blocked and banned if it was made public and not done in this private setting that we're doing it in. These two hours contain biblical, political, national, and international revelation and information that I am sure that many of you have not been aware of. It is for truth lovers only. I want you to order right now this prophetic resource package, my brand new book, The Apocalyptic Reset, and the two-hour prophetic CDs by going online at perrystone.org or calling 1-888-21-BREAD. Or write me at Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. Now, we're making this available for your donation of $35 or more, and you can request the offer APR-140. That's APR-140. I'm going to unmask the radical globalists and individuals who have set out to oppose and silence Christians, silence patriots, and shut the mouth of conservatives. And we will show you in the book what we can do when we unite together. We are looking forward to getting this into your hands.